Hey guys and gals, welcome back to my channel. This is Captain Cuz 6951. I've been a member of this community uh, for about two months now, and I noticed there's quite a few people that are doing a dedication build. This dedication build, sorry, I can get the words out. This dedication build is for Mr. Jim Stein, or Steen, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his last name. Uh, but it is the Bofors 40 millimeter gun. Um, I am doing it in a different scale than everyone else is, only because I started doing my military bills in this scale, and I want to keep it kind of the same. <clears throat> Besides, I don't have enough room to use to do anything bigger. <laughs> Anyhow, um, this is my version of it, and we are going to start with part one, and that'll be working on the tractor. So, with all that being said, let's get on with this video. We'll be right back. What you're looking at in front of you is an Airfix Bofors 40mm gun and tractor. Unfortunately, uh, I could not do the scale that you guys are doing because all the rest of my military equipment is built in 172nd scale. So, I wanted to keep it all together so I could do kind of like a little diorama. Before... We get on to this. Um, I was telling a few people that uh, I do have airbrushes and I do have a compressor, but the compressor I have is just a bit too noisy, so I bought a new compressor. And so yesterday I got the compressor and I started messing around with my airbrush and this and that the other thing, and I tried a little bit of uh, camouflage. So this is what I came up with. Change that to that. Uh, it's not done yet, but I thought I'd just give it a little bit of a shot. This this model is still not finished. I still need to put the track on it. Tracks, I should say. Still need to put some up the front here. Uh, maybe even add a third color. There's two colors on there now. But, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm having fun with the airbrush. So, what, a good thing about that is that when I start to paint this model, it will be with airbrush rather than rattle can. So, with that being said, give me a minute and we will be right back. Alright guys, let's uh, go ahead and investigate what's inside of this box. So, I'm assuming that the colors that are on this box is what the general consensus of colors should be for this particular gun. Um, so, let's open it up and see. Okay. They give you a little history of the gun, which is pretty cool, and I'll go over a little bit of that with you guys. But first, we'll uh, take a look at the instructions here. <clears throat> All right, looks like they want to start the build with the tractor, as they're calling it. I am going to do this uh, build in multi-parts um, because I want it to be uh, my best build uh, in memory of Jim. Uh, I did not know the man. Like I said, I'm fairly new to this, um, to this community. So, all right, so we've got a lot of wheels again. Uh, <clears throat> then on uh, step number 14, I actually... Yeah, step 14 is where they start putting the gun assembly together. The towing equipment or whatever you want to call it. And that will continue on here. And then over here, I guess they're giving you all the different uh, decals and so on and so forth. So anyhow, that's pretty cool. This should be a fun build. This is what we got in here. Everything is in like a khaki color. Now, they do give you figures. And this guy here looks like he's holding a, a bunch of shells. This guy is looking out for the aircraft. And uh, let's see what else we got. I know there's a couple other guys. Oh, yeah, here they go. Two or three guys sitting down, probably at the gun seats. This is going to be fun. I don't know if I'm going to be able to paint these guys. My eyesight is not that good. So I'll have to see if I can do that. That'll be a challenge. Anyhow... <clears throat> Let's see a little bit about the history of this. Reliable, official, efficient, and available at the outbreak of war when Britain needed it. 
The 40 millimeter Bofors gun was without doubt one of the most outstanding anti-aircraft guns for the period. It was, it was employed by both sides in the Second World War, and various, various, and various versions continue to be used today in many parts of the world. So, anyhow, that sounds like a very interesting thing, so let's, uh, I guess we should jump into this and see what's going on. So let me uh, start getting these sprue parts ready, and uh, we'll start the build. So give me a minute, and we will be right back. All right, guys. As you can see, I got my sprues out that uh, have that contain the parts that I need. Uh, looks like we're going to start with the front and rear suspension right here. So let's go ahead and dig these parts out. Now, I've been asking you guys about uh, some sticky stuff that I see you guys using. Uh, I have not gotten an answer yet. Uh, but if anybody knows what the sticky stuff is that you put your parts on, uh, I would appreciate it if you let me know. Anyhow, we're going to try and orient these parts on this piece of tape right here in the configuration that they have on the picture. And it looks like this is going to be upside down. So, we need parts one, which is this guy right there. And uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and snip them. I gotta get a different type of snippers also because these seem to be a little bit too big. And we're dropping, oh, look at that. <laughs> He's standing up. All right, lay him down there. Well, let's see. Might be a little harder than I thought. I'll leave him off of there for right now. Now we need two and three, and that's on this other screw, I think. Yeah, right there. Two. Well, I tell you what, it sucks getting old. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yeah, two and three right there. So two is gonna be on that side. And then three. This guy. <clears throat> it's gonna go. No, I think. No, that's probably right. Okay. All right. So we got those couple of parts cut out. Now we're gonna cut out the differentials. So we got number four and number five. I saw those right here. <clears throat> Four and five. Four is the one that's going to go up front. That doesn't look like it belongs. I'll have to cut that out, but that's going to go there. And then this one. Here. Alright, so we got one, two, three, four, and five. Now they're asking for the drive shaft six and seven. But I think I'll go ahead and assemble what I have here right now. <clears throat> and then we'll put the drive shafts in. Then we'll figure out what color we're gonna paint this. Alright, stay tuned and I will be right back. Alright guys, <clears throat> sorry about that. Uh, what I did was I used my square and put a square on this here piece of tape so I can keep everything kind of kind of square as I build it. Um, I'm going to do one side first and then do the second side because uh, this little sway bar needs to go in there and I want to get that in uh, as I'm building it. So with that being said, I'm going to use this uh, Tamiya. It's uh, a little bit thicker and sets up a little bit faster. So what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll put a little dab out here on this uh, piece of plastic I have. And then I will take my little toothpick and I'll take some of that glue and put it right there. There we 
right there. Okay. And now I will take my spring. And these are all oriented in one position, guys. You can see there's a little square in there. That's where that little sway bar sits. So right now, we're going to go ahead and put this guy here. I'll hold this guy and put him there. I'm just not used to working with tweezers. Now, come on now, stand up. Stand up, be proud. This guy needs to go more this way. Trying to keep this square while it sets up, or as, as square as I can. Now these differentials are oriented uh, where there's a hole on the top. Got to make sure you put it in that same position. Then your drive shafts will all line up. So this one here needs to actually be turned. You can see this little notch. This little notch right here. That drive shaft sits in there. So I'll go ahead and stick this one in there. Then I will attempt to put that sway bar in there. <laughs> All right, so will this be as easy as I think it's going to be? I don't think so. Right there. Okay. All right, now just got to lift this side up, put him in there. <laughs> of course, this is not going to be that easy. Yeah, right there. Right there. This guy looks like he needs to get turned down a bit. This guy needs to get turned back. It's not, I don't like working with this tape here. Got to figure out a different way to hold this stuff. There. All right. Once that sets up, I will actually lift it off and put that little sway bar in there and then line, line it up with this side and glue this side together. <clears throat> I just don't like using the tape because it doesn't give me any kind of maneuverability. Try and keep things as straight as I can because the suspension is important. <laughs> so we'll let that dry up for a couple of minutes. Uh, when I when I bring you guys back, this will be complete. Still gonna go here. All right, guys. So I decided on how I'm going to do this. I'm going to take the sway bar and I'm going to put it in this side. And then I am going to put this together here. Now I had this sitting up on a couple of uh, stirrer sticks. So it's kind of sitting level because the uh, differentials have a rounded back and it's not sitting level. So with that being said, we're going to use some of this uh, quick set. I wish I had a third hand. <laughs> And now the little dippity do, according to the pitch, it looks like it goes down. So, we'll do this. We'll put a little dippity do in there. I don't know. I'm not really impressed with this. I don't see any glue coming out, except for that time. <laughs> All right, now, where are we? Down and in. Hopefully that sets up pretty quick, which it did. And now the objective is to get this into there and secure it. But I'm going to let this rest for a minute. Make sure it's fully dry before I attempt that. We'll be right back.
Alright guys, as you can see I've got my front and rear suspension done and I have the uh, number 7 drive shaft right here waiting to go in. And I'm up to this point right now where I'm going to start putting the parts onto the chassis. Problem. <laughs> and I watched someone's video the other day and I don't remember who it was, but he was saying kind of like the same thing I'm going to be talking to you guys about right now. This part is number 16. Okay, now I'm looking on this sprue, right, and I see here 18 and 19. Then it jumps to 54, 22, 60, 101. I mean, there's no no rhyme or reason on how these got how they got these things numbered. So I'm looking for this part 16. I don't know if I could put this together before I find that part. So. I do not see it on this sprue, which it should have been, with the six, with the 18 and 19, it should have been, but it's not. 22, 104, geez louise. All right, let's look on another sprue. Now we got 8990, what else? Oh, here's 17, woo, wow. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to continue looking for this part because I don't know if I could put this rest of this together without finding this part. So we'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, I have found my part. There it is right there. And it is on the sprue with numbers like uh, 37, 80, 74, 11... I mean, these parts are just, it's, this is probably the worst kit uh, for naming and numbering parts that I have worked on so far. Anyhow, I guess now I could put this guy on and uh, continue to build. Be back in a little bit. All right, guys and gals, I'm going to start putting a little bit of color on here. Um, this is all going to get uh, drab green, as the rest of the model will. Uh, the suspension will get black and this right here is the exhaust and I have right here is uh, some of the Vallejo rust and it's air but just because it says air you can't doesn't mean you can't brush it on so I'm gonna go ahead and brush this on real quick because I'm gonna get close to the end of this build here pretty soon this part of the build I should say And this will be the second coat. I need to uh, start doing primer on some of these models that I'm doing. I have not been doing any primer. But I thought that this rust would be a good color for the exhaust. Put a little bit more out. pretty slick how they got this all marked out as far as where the holes are and stuff to mount this so it should be pretty fairly easy and it's okay if it's not covered 100% because it is an exhaust system so all right we'll let that dry up <clears throat> now I'm gonna start putting some of these parts on here and maybe even start putting a little bit of the body together so, like I said, the suspension will get black, and maybe if I have enough energy and confidence in myself, I will paint the oil pan and transmission a different color. So, that being said, let me get going on that, and we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, guys, now that we have the exhaust painted up, and I think it looks pretty good, actually. What do you think? I think that looks good. Alright, so we're going to start putting some more of this chassis together. And these look like little toolboxes. And they got specific places they want to go. So, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see. I believe. 
Yeah, this is just good. Now, there's two holes here. And I tried using the front one, but the front one doesn't line up very well. So it's got to be the back hole that lines up because it lines up perfectly on the on the chassis. So that being said, we'll then take this and we'll put a little dabby do there and a little dabby there there, and we'll put him in place. I said we'll put him in place. Come on. I don't know what my hands, my hands have been cramping up really bad lately. It's the old age. <laughs> it's funny, when you try and dry fit it, it fits perfect, but as soon as you put glue on there, it doesn't want to go. There you go. Damn, I can't believe how bad my hand was cramping up. Mm. All right, let's get this other side on here. Same thing, it can only go in one way. It's gonna be the back hole there. So put a little dippity do here. And a little dippity do there. All right, now in the hole, and there you go. All right, so we will let that set up a bit and Next thing I want to do, so this guy is finished. Oh no, I got number 13 has to go in here. Well, I'll go on another parts hunt. <laughs> Look for number 13 that's got to go in that little slot right there. I wish they would tell you what these parts are. I would like to learn what all these parts are. Anyhow, I will go off camera while I look for this part and bring you back when I find it. All right, guys, um, I'm going to start getting the body, as much of the body done in this video as I possibly can. Oops. <laughs> no oops allowed. Um, so I got some of the components cut out. Um, this is the top. I'm not going to glue it down. I'm just going to put it in there to keep everything kind of square. The reason why is because I need to put interior parts in there, and I want to I probably paint the interior a different color. <clears throat> I should paint that different color now. Um, but I'm adventurous, so we'll see how this is going to go. So these are the first two parts right here. This is the engine uh, covers, and this here is the radiator. And of course my suspension is ready to go in, uh, but I'm not going to put it in until I paint everything. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and start assembling this little guy here. Okay. Quick set. Tamiya. Down there and down there. Now, I can't imagine this build in like a larger scale. There must be so much more detail. Although this has got pretty good detail as it stands. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, is I'm gonna hit this in the back a little bit more. Just like that, okay? <clears throat> and this will be the front, I would call it the front cowl. And again, it's got specific space it needs to go into. So we'll go ahead and put him in place. It's funny how it just sticks to your fingers. And there's absolutely no glue on my fingers. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it's going all the way down. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Oh, that's better. If I can get in there. That's much better. All 
All right. We'll let that set up for a minute or two and uh, come back and we'll put the rest of the stuff together. And meanwhile, I'll go ahead and cut some more parts out for the, tr for the truck, road, uh, truck bed. If I could find them. <laughs> All right, so we got... I don't have these headlights pulled out yet. Back this out a little bit. There you go. I don't have, where was I? I don't have these headlights pulled out yet or this little bumper red or whatever that is down there. I do have all of this out and the top, but I'm not gonna glue the top in place. I'm just gonna use that to make things square. So now we're gonna start here. And parts we're gonna need for that are, uh, oh, those are mud flaps too. <laughs> All right. So we are going to need. I think it would tell me number thirty-one. This has got to be it. Thirty-one. Do. -do. What else? 37 and 32. 37, 32. I know I need these side pieces too. I'll cut them off in a minute. <coughs> 37. I tell you. Um, I appreciate so much the other the other kits that have these sprues marked 37. We're looking for 37. Where's the number on this guy? Although that's what it looks like. <laughs> but there's no number on it. That's 32. Do we need 32? Oh, that's 32, okay. Thirty-two. Still didn't find this thirty-seven. What else am I gonna need while well, I'm here? Thirty-four. These are all additional. You need to find the 32. All right, guys. My uh, front and back uh, walls of the cab are in there, and they're pretty secure. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start putting the front uh, engine cover together. I'm going to go back to using my Fowler glue. Uh, because it gives me a little bit more work time, and uh, I like using it. It's been my favorite for a couple of years now, along with Model Master's glue. But, let's see. we got places for this to sit on, so there, and there. Looks good. Now we'll do the other side. This glue has got a very, very sweet smell to it also. Looks like we've got a little I hope you guys approve of this model what I'm doing for Mr. Stein. I wish I could have done the other, but like I said, I already started doing my stuff in 172nd scale. Alright. We'll let that sit for a minute before we put the front together. Now, we'll jump to this.
Uh, it looks like the bed. I'm not doing the interior yet, like I said earlier, because I want to paint it. So let's see, we'll start with this guy. And these holes are also oriented. These holes are also oriented in a specific way also. So we're going to build this the way I see it. going to build it the way I see it right here. And so we will start. So this guy, he goes on the back wall, like right here. So I will go ahead and put some glue in there. He will sit right in there. If it wants to play nice. All right. Now the second wall, he's got a couple of uh, positive located points on there. So we will go ahead and put some glue on this guy, a little bit here, and a little bit there. And there you go. Now, I don't know if these guys are mud flaps or whatever, but they go underneath and we'll be putting those on also. Uh, and I would just want to see you know, how this is all going to come together. Uh, so, once we get this together, it says to go ahead and mount it on the chassis. So, we'll go ahead and do that. And there are no front doors on this build. So, give that a couple minutes to dry up. Then we'll go ahead and put these guys on. And uh, we'll fit it onto the chassis and see how it looks. Then once that's on there, I can go ahead and finish up the front engine cover with the radiator. Uh, and then I can go ahead and spray this. I'm, I'm anxious to use my air, my airbrush. <laughs> so. Alright. So, these guys here will go on the back side. And where's my picture at? So, this would be the back side. Take that off like that. And also. Let's see if it's a picture here. Under this tall wall go the ones with the little cutout, which is that guy. So he will go, and they pre they fit pretty tight in there, and they're on kind of an angle also. So. Of course, it'll make a liar out of me. Unless this one goes on this side. They do have angles on them too, so. There you go. There's one. Alright. And we will use the Tamaya for that. side in. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I guess it's right. <laughs> All right, that's the back two. And we got the front two. And these will be angled the opposite way. All 
I knew that was going to happen. All right. I need to wait for this, uh, for some of this glue to dry up. I'll bring it back when this is all complete, and then we'll mount it. We'll mount it on the, uh, chassis. All right, we'll just let that set for a few minutes. And we'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, we've got a couple more pieces left on this before this body is ready to go to the paint shop. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put these last couple pieces on here. And they need to go in a certain way. I know they're not etched in there very well, but there are doors and hatches in there. So, all right, so again, we will use my Fowler paint, uh, Fowler paint, <laughs> Fowler glue. And then we'll back it up with some of the Tamiya. Alright. And there we go. Oops. <laughs> that always happens. The other way. This way. There you go. Alright. And in you go. Very, very nice. Just like it was made for it. <laughs> All right, and then we got this side to do. Same thing. Make sure you got the hatches and everything oriented correctly. And we'll hold it. And again, with the fowler. All right, and in we go. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm liking this. Everything is fitting together really nice. All right, so there's other little <coughs> there's other little stuff I need to add on here. I am not going to put this uh, I'm not going to put the suspension on right now or am I going to do the wheels? I'm going to finish off the body uh, and give it a paint job and we'll call this video uh, part 1 of the Bofors gun for Mr. Jim Stein. So let me go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll come back in a little bit. All right, guys and gals, what you're looking at now is the first coat of paint on the uh, tractor. Uh, it needs to get a second coat. I understand that, but uh, first time using my airbrush with the olive green or drab green, whatever you want to call it, uh, I don't think it came out too bad. The tops are not glued in place because I need to get into the interior. And there's a bunch of stuff that goes in there. Anyhow, this is going to be the end of part one of this build. Uh, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed it. And as always, your questions, comments, inputs, subs, shares, and likes are always welcome. For now, that's all, folks. Captain Cuz 6951 out for now.